Hey guys. So it looks like BlizzCon happened. I guess we're going to have to talk about it. I'm Tim. I'm Mitch. I'm Jason. Here we go. So let me tell you guys, uh, Steam did an update recently. Do you guys, do you guys notice this? Hear about this? Do you know about this? Yeah, uh, I found out when I logged in and my library was all fucked. Yeah, like so. Apparently, Steam, I guess, has been getting a lot of feedback that they're not hip with the material design philosophies of the 2019s so steam client looks prettier now was part of the update um which i didn't think there was anything wrong with the old steam client personally but it is prettier are you telling me not to update i haven't updated yet well so apparently it takes up more cpu (laughs) there's options to make it not take as much cpu uh, in the settings, but it takes a more CPU by default, and the design is prettier but more jumbled, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, overall, that's it's a it's a okay update. But one thing that came with it, let me tell you, was the new feature called Remote Play Together, which so you guys, Mitch, you have a Steam link, right? Uh yeah. So it's like I can share my local gameplay to you over the internet. And then like I send you an invite to a game like Cuphead for instance that doesn't have a uh, online co-op and it'll act like you're just literally sitting next to me right here. Hmm. That's super sweet. But it is it, pretty sweet. And- but if, until they get their shit worked out, I don't think I want to update. Yeah. So I uh, I was messing I was messing around with it. It actually like assuming that your internet is relatively stable, it actually works really well and is totally playable, especially when it, with a game like Cuphead that's very stylized. So you don't. So it's not like you know you're not looking for beautiful graphics. You're looking for playability. Were you playing and, it out? Uh, were you the host or were you the guest? I was the host. Oh. Did did your guest have any like lag complaints or any so hiccups? What we, had, or? what we end up having to do is you know how you know how like for Steam Link you can set or just the remote play feature in general, you can set like your client settings. So he had to go to his client settings and restrict the bandwidth to like five megabits per second. So that it wouldn't keep trying to use more than my internet provider had available, even though I have way more than five megabits per second upload. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, So once he restricted it, he actually got a very smooth experience. Was it so he restricted it so that it would like downplay the quality then? Yeah. So the quality gets a little bit downplayed when you do that, but you get. you get a you get like slightly more fuzzy picture but you get better imp- you don't get input lag hmm. so it's kind of it makes me it makes me hopeful for for the future cuz like stadia is based off a lot of like the same concepts in technology so it's like huh i mean obviously stadia is being hosted at the google data center yeah, like there's oh. there's a big difference oh. between streaming a game from Stadia and streaming a game from Tim's PC. Yeah, because, you know, obviously Tim's PC is way better because it's at my house. So were you playing but... with your Steam Link? No, I was playing on my local machine. Okay, was he playing on his Steam Link? No, he was playing on his local ma- his machine. Oh, why did you ask so... if I had a Steam Link? Because it's the same kind of, it's the exact same experience, essentially. Oh, I see, I see what you're it's saying. It's like, it's as if 
like when he's when he was playing, it says if his computer gets turned into a Steam link that streams the game over the Internet. I see what you're saying. OK, OK. So I could see like they could probably they could extend that to be like. I mean, if they wanted to stand up their own, the if they wanted to stand up like a subscription service to pay for the game streaming off of their network. Like I could see them doing it. Like the concept is there. I wonder if it would work with the steam link. Like if I, I can mean, accept your invite or whatever from a steam link. I don't know. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work. And that's something I should probably try because the steam link is just streaming my desktop. Well, yeah, it would probably, I don't know. You, you know should try it. You know what I'm not going to do? Update. You, you got to update. I mean, it's you not that bad. The, the client needs to look prettier, Jason. It's I'll very do, important. I'll, I'll do that once they get the, the other stuff fixed. Okay, so hold on. Well, you had said that the new update uses more CPU. Like, where did you read that and how much more CPU? Because it's not like I've noticed a detrimental effect on my computer. No, I haven't either. But I also turned off the, like, it, it was spiking a little bit, but nothing yeah. super crazy, yeah, at least for me. Um, but I was, like, the Reddits were talking about that. A couple of and anecdotal experience from friends and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I, I mean... They literally have an option in the new client that says, like, increase performance, turn our bullshit off. Like, hmm. it doesn't literally say that. It it says turn, like, well, features off. But. Yeah, that's good. I have, like, Steam Overlay always off. Always. So if you send me a message, I'll never know. You'll never know. it won't show me. Oh, see, I have not, that overlay on. I have NVIDIA's not, overlay not be, on. Well, not because... I'm like anti-social or anything. It's just that it's been known to cause issues with games. So I just, especially games that are moddable, so I just turn it off. Mm. Yeah. I've never had any issues. No. I do a lot of modding. A lot of modding. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't do any modding. Yeah. I, I like to play my games the way developers intended them to be played. <laughs> That's boring. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I just think that the remote play together, it's pretty cool because there are definitely a few of those like indie games that like Cuphead was the biggest one. I was like, oh, that's cool. Finally got past that candy level. Nice. Yeah, I can see that being like good for indie developers where they don't have to worry about figuring out net code and figuring out how to take their game online. They can just push yeah. to Steam. Seems like it's yep. useful. It's definitely a game changer. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say something about that, but I forgot. Oh well. I oh, wonder well, no. though if that's gonna make it to where some games are going to lose the co-op capability, right? Because like you have some games where you can co-op, and so you can Steam Link or whatever, and then you can couch play it uh, with someone sitting right next to you. But now that they have like this play together thing they could be like well you don't need to you don't need to have co-op like just have them sitting at their computer next to you and then like it's essentially the same thing but it's like the same thing that happened when uh like halo started getting rid of split screen co-op well so what's interesting about it is the remote play because it's literally acting like you have an extra controller connected to your pc like it uses like the game has to support local co-op for that to work. So like we were testing it with a bunch of games like Cuphead. It's like, hey, there's another player. Press start to join. And so he presses start and it and it joins the game or like Rocket League. He joins and then it's a split screen with the right oh. side being being the other player. So it's yeah, like it's a, it's it actually will encourage local co-op. And in fact, I, I'm, I'm kind of worried like for, for like indie games, if they'll just be like, eh, we don't need to do, we don't need to do like online multiplayer. Fuck it. Like we got steam remote play, which like it's a, it's a really cool feature for games that don't support it. 
but it's also like it would just be better if the game supported it you know well that's gonna lock them into a launcher exclusivity so i don't think they're gonna build their game around that specifically unless they want to be exclusive to steam unless this is how steam builds their exclusivities instead of making it to where people that's how they've always done it yeah that's how they always done it so one of the most appealing things for exclusivity on steam is that they have steamworks or so which is basically a network infrastructure already built for your game so you don't you know that's probably why bungie went flying to them and so because they don't they probably don't have that inbuilt network structure yeah for the game where steam does so steam just makes features and says hey i got these things and then people choose to stay and the other the launchers just don't have them yeah that's what i'm saying so yeah so I, everyone's giving I, shit for epic because they're like toting out all these exclusivities Steam's yeah, doing paying. the same damn thing. They're just paying them with features instead of money. Instead of bucks? <laughs> yeah. I mean, since the feature is really cool, I'm, I, I'm okay with that. I mean, like, let, let's think Pay about... features. Well, think about, you know, all the online play and, and server space that they can probably save, games can save by using Steam's infrastructure, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like paying people in money. IOUs. Yeah, you're not you're not wrong. So I think we need to boycott Steam because they keep <laughs> they're they're doing all this exclusivity crap. Yep. Yeah. So uh that's in jest, I'm not gonna boycott Steam Steam. Yeah, I don't No, I don't already installed that. I uninstalled it. I deleted my profile. You already uninstalled I've it. it. How many it's thousands gone. of dollars is your it's library? Gone. It's gone. If you really if you're really committed, you'll go and delete your account. It's de- it's deleted. You all deleted the, your Steam yep. account. All four thousand dollars worth of games I have, yep. like gone. That's Down not an drain. exaggeration. That's my Destroy. that's that's what my Steam account's valued at. Yep. Time to move on. But that's to like Rockstar. Full price. There's no way you paid. No, you're right. Full price for every game. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I yeah. don't. I don't agree in. Uh, game sales i like to pay full price for my games because i like to give <laughs> developers the money that they earned <laughs> that's well, why that's why i buy all my games at epic yeah yeah have i have i got an ubisoft launcher for you yeah speaking of launchers too red dead redemption came out today the day of this recording and it's not out on any store yet except their launcher so what they're doing is it's going to come out on epic and steam but they're going to get as much sales on that rockstar launcher as fucking possible before it comes out on the other launchers. How and long then, is it exclusive for? Like a week. Okay. And then, and I could be wrong about that. Don't yell at me if I'm wrong. It could be a day for all I know. Gamers are so bad at waiting too. They'll be like, <gasps> well, <gasps> what? I mean, but you also get the best pre-order bonuses on the Rockstar app and you buy it on Epic or Steam. All it does is launch the Rockstar app. Yeah. So, yeah. so why would I all, do that? So the only reason you would do that is you, if you want Steam's awesome controller drivers. But couldn't you just do the add to the Steam library thing? But like for me, I had like with the Origin Launcher, I had to jerry rig some stuff to get to work correctly. Yeah, depending on the launcher. So the yeah. one I've never had problems with is Uplay. Like any of the Ubisoft games, if I... I, I think that's because they already have a, a API... Yeah, so like it doesn't matter where I buy it. Like if I buy it exclusively on Uplay, I just go and add it to Steam and it acts like as if I had bought it on Steam. Except for updates, right? Except for updates. Yeah, whereas EA... Which that sucks because like the game's never updated when I launch it. Yeah. (laughs) EA until recently had left Steam entirely, so they probably didn't have any kind of network hooks or anything, whatever you want to call it, so... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, now they're back. And in 10 days, we'll play some Jedi Souls. Except for Tim. Except He's scared Tim. of it. Yep. I'm terrified of that game. I'll he, need to He uh he doesn't like perfect timing and blocking and thinking things and Yeah. Watching your health. He wants to just spam A. I just, no, I want it to be like Force Unleashed where I that could just game hold was the block. Boring. Where I could hold the block button and run down a corridor and he's just going and then the the stormtroopers there and I just and I just press the button to force push in and and I pick them up and I toss them off the cliff and then I pick another guy and toss them off the cliff and that's just what I would do I would just use the I like 
the way I played Force Unleashed, that was a he was a sadistic fuck. Like he didn't, he didn't. I barely slashed anybody with the lightsaber. I was just tossing him off the cliffs. You can still do that in this game. It's just more methodical and thoughtful. You can actually do it a little bit better because you can grab people and then move them in front of like as a shield blasters and yeah. like use them as human shields and it, then toss both of them off a cliff. Yeah. If you, if you have the, if you have the energy. Yeah. So it, it, the, the souls, the souls formula is all about what resources you have at the time. So in the first three games, it was all about the stamina bar. Do you have enough stamina to do this? And then there were consequences yeah. for that. And da, 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 da. so like, you're not going to be, I mean, the lore wise, this character's a uh, ex Padawan from some dude. He's not going to be, Darth Vader. He's not like yes. He's not super cool. Who he's some little is, bitch that found a robot. Yeah. Who I if I remember correctly, the Force and Leech characters were were kind of minorly in the canon before Disney erased it all because of the power scale that that character had. Yeah, he was the he was Darth Vader's secret apprentice mm-hmm. in that yeah. game. I mean, it was in the lore in that he got inserted into the lore by the game. Like there wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't anywhere else in the lore. No. Well, I mean, so, when you have a game that's sanctioned by Lucasfilms, isn't yeah. that all you need? Yeah, I yeah. know, but it's not. It's not like any of the movies hinted to the fact that no. Darth Vader had a secret apprentice. Uh, except in, except in uh, Empire Strikes Back, when he looks at the camera and winks. Yes. Yep. <laughs> that's um, yep. That's exactly what he meant. <laughs> yep. He's like. Are you, you really know, not going to play the game? Uh, I mean, I will probably grab it on discount. I'll be. It'll I'll probably be, be on. I bet you it could be an EA Access launch title. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Well, in that case, let's do the EA All Access thing. Check it out at some point. So I want to check out the new Mirror's Edge too, which I never pl- ended up playing because I really liked the original Mirror's Edge game. I never played the other one. It was probably shit, but I don't know. What I do know I, is I'm a fight like a jet. I'm a fight like a Jedi. And then the question is, how many cinematics is that game going to have? Because for you to like it, it needs to have at least 10 cinematics. It needs to have a cinematic at every point in which I had to do significant work in order to get to. Did I? Okay. Well, so the nature of storytelling has changed, though, because uh, they'll be telling you a story while you're playing the game. Is that not? That's that's the problem I have because if they're telling me a story while I'm sitting here trying to block and shit, I'm not paying attention to the story. Just like straight up. Oh, I don't have that problem. Because like whenever I'm like it, like Destiny. This this is one thing about Destiny which you say you like, but actually drives me like. It makes it so I, I'm not able to un, not able to follow what's going on. I have to come back later. They'll be like, "Oh my god, this thing is happening!" and the blah, blah blah, and they're telling you this lore while you're shooting people. And I'm just kind of like, "What's what's happening?" Uh, okay, whatever. I, I think mm. I think years of being an audiobook listener and YouTube in the background has made me be able to do that with proficiency mm. while yeah, I'm doing see, something else. I don't know. I just kind of have a like the way that I, the way that just my brain functions is like I can literally, I can be listening to something. And if I'm reading something or doing like I'm, if my brain is engaged in something else, like I'm not, I'm hearing it, but I'm definitely not listening. Well, for, I, I can, I can say the same with reading, but when I'm doing something reflexive, it's mostly muscle memory. I have no problem. Because that's that's pre-programmed in my yeah, in but my the game's memory. too hard. It's not muscle memory. That is not true. <laughs> well, I think uh, Tim, you're gonna really like Death Stranding uh, because that oh, yeah. that game has an ending cinematic that's two hours long. Two hours. You yeah. like that? That's so cool. Didn't okay. you, didn't you so, say you hated? Come on, didn't you say you hated the long cutscenes in MGS4? They were excessive. Th- no, okay. So they were excessive. It was I would say it it was excessive, but I also was like I liked it. I hated it and I'm a It I was, was okay. So here's the thing. It was excessive because the ending cutscene in Metal Gear Solid 4 was like it was like the end of Lord of the Rings 
we're like, okay, the cool thing happened. Okay, now let's go back and we'll go to this area and we'll talk to these friends from the last four movies and then we'll go to this area and we'll talk to these friends and it's just like wrapping up all these storylines and i'm just like eh like but two we didn't hours need, we didn't need an outro like that but if it was like exciting kind of like a good ending that like ends the game versus trying to end like all of these storylines from like 10 different games well, which is only slightly, which is only slightly hyperbole. Uh, according to this uh, forum post on Game Facts, the guy said, "Sitting through a two-hour cutscene finale and still have no idea what just happened." So, <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna love it! I it's don't. It's gonna be great. Get that? It, the, okay, so my my favorite gaming experience, and this is like, and I think this comes from being like a blizzard fan this is a good segue i mean being a blizzard fan is the like that that starcraft when you first play starcraft and you play the original starcraft and you get to the end and you think you killed the overmind but you didn't really kill the overmind and then tassadar has sacrificed himself and it's like probably one of the coolest cinematics but it's not it's like five made. minutes But the experience that I'm getting, it's yeah, it is five minutes, which at the time was pretty damn long for a cinematic. Right. But I'd argue and I played the same game that it was more exciting playing through the game and having the story happen while I'm playing the game. What was exciting about it was you get to the end like that mission, at least, you know, for what, 10 year old. Tim was pretty damn was hard. And so it's like, ah, I did it. And I got to the end. So it's like this, it's like the emotional journey, right? You get, ah, and then you get this like dip of like, I finished. And then you get a, you get a cut scene. All right. I'm gonna give you a scenario before we move on to the main topic. Here's a scenario. 10 year old. You is playing death stranding with that same mentality. You are binging this game. It's three in the morning. Yeah. You got to go to school at seven. You really want to see this last ending. You have no clue what you're getting into. You beat the game at three. You're stuck yeah. there until you got to go to school. <laughs> I would be fucking pissed. See, because that that is one of the problems like in in at least like most games, like when when I was growing up playing games, if you if you got to the end, that was the only way you were ever going to see that cut scene. Like, if you wanted to see that cutscene, you had to beat the game again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you had, like, a save point, like, right, you know, depending I, on the kind of game it was. But uh, unless you had a save point right there, like, you had to go and do that hard thing to, you know, the final boss, whatever the thing. Like, I, I had to I had to beat the Metal Gear. I had to I had to kill the Overmind. Like, that was the only way to do it. So, yeah, I, I get it. I'd be really frustrated. Nowadays, you can be like, I'm just going to go watch the YouTube video. Well, uh, he better have put an end game like cutscene viewer because it'd be like, oh, honey, you want to finish off the rest of the Death Stranding ending tonight? We watched the last 30 <laughs> right. minutes. Like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> like, Death Stranding. And then. Chill. All right. One more. One well, more. Like, thing. If you're going to make cutscenes that long, you at least have yeah. to have a way to pause the cutscene. And then Kojima announced he's going to start making movies. You should just fucking make movies. He should make movies. Well, so okay. good at it. So here's you've seen all these movies that you've made with video games around them here's what i would like to see i want to see the ultimate cinematic experience video game where you like you you make your character right and you spend like it's like a it's like a end of the world scenario uh right okay okay. i'm in and so you're like you you get in there and and the quest is oh you need to uh rally the troops and build up our forces and because there's like this neighboring city that's gonna attack or whatever and so you spend like 30 hours of gameplay like okay like gathering and and cropping and like building up your fortress and and just doing like all this side quest kind of stuff right and then at the very very end of the 30 hours you meet the main character will smith and then it turns into a will smith movie (laughs) <laughs> and then it's like oh to see the end go ahead and buy tickets to the movie that's coming out oh and to oh, oh, to buy disney <laughs> oh no yeah it's like want to see the end of the game yep. buy the dlc fuck 
I mean, at that point, you're already 30 hours invested, so you're going to do it. They'd be they'd be like, what, Jason? It's about it's not about the ending. It's about the gameplay. Well, and we put what, all what? the cinematics yeah. what into a gameplay. You, you said that you didn't want a cinematic experience inside the game. So we took the cinema out and put it in the movie theater where it belongs. And so then you all don't get to see the gameplay. <laughs> I wouldn't give a shit. I want to buy that, a game. That, that, anyway. that ticket is $30. Yep. <laughs> like if I see a game being advertised as like a giant cinematic experience, I'm completely turned off. Like I was curious about Death Stranding. Not anymore. I don't really care. Now like, you're just upset about it. No, I'm not upset. Like I have not been a major Kojima fan after Metal Gear Solid 4. Once Metal Gear Solid 4 was done, that was it. Like I, I bought Phantom Pain and I played for like three hours. I'm like, I'm over this series. I already got my closure. Really? I don't I don't like the style anymore. Like I've grown out of it. I don't like being chained to to watching some fucker talk. Like Actually, and that game had the best gameplay improvements too. Like apart from the goofy ass way that Phantom Pain ended, I actually it was one of my favorite. Yeah, I just don't care. Like, apart from the story problems that it had, I, it was actually a really fun gameplay wise yeah, that was the best evolution of gameplay but that just i just can't care about like a kojima game anymore and it's not because i hate kojima like i was the biggest metal gear fanboy growing up and then once four just kind of i guess you could say clarified tired, everything tired you out kind of wrapped it up in a bundle and cutscene me to death and i was just like this is not how i want to see this medium go forward anymore and i realized when he made metal gear like, it was revolution. Like, oh, my God, this game is fucking talking to me. And I'm like, well, PC games have been doing this forever. But it also had a it had a really good voice acting and a coherent narrative. And the gameplay was fun. And then two, well, this, was, hmm? this was also like, oh, my God, what do we like? We literally have a DVD that this game is on. What can we do with that? Right. And so Squaresoft was kind of guilty of this, too, but not as bad. Because like RPGs kind of get a pass because it's always had long dialogue scenes between battles and stuff like that. Um, but at least in an RPG, I can kind of just keep hitting the button. Skip, 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 skip. I don't know. But uh, yeah, as a kid, I was marveled by it. But as an adult, I was like, God damn, this fucking let me play a video game. Because Metal Gear Solid 4 had some interesting gameplay tidbits you never really got to explore. There wasn't a ton yeah. of game there. Stupid. Yeah, it was like, I think there was there was a point in that game where it was literally like 45 minute cutscene, 30 minutes of gameplay, and then another 45 minute cutscene. God, that frustrates me so much. Yeah, it was so, fucking rad. It was so good. I'll say one more on this topic. So like that's what Sony produces really, is they produce a ton of cinematic experiences. They have outliers like Bloodborne and Horizon Zero Dawn. But like they need to offer more because from what I'm seeing of the first party studios and now Microsoft's acquiring, they're going to offer more. They're yeah. going to offer more than in that stupid bonerific cinematic experience that you get from a fucking movie. So, well, see, I, it just makes me mad that there has to be, <clears throat> it has to be like separated because like, I think it would be really cool if you had a game that had ridiculously rich and rewarding gameplay and then also really fucking cool cutscenes. You know what I mean? You don't have to be crazy long. I'm just saying, like, you know what game has nice, rich, and and rewarding gameplay and good cutscenes? What? Sands like the last year and a half. Uh, World of Warcraft. Oh, so we're gonna move on to the main topic. <laughs> oh, so BlizzCon was last weekend. Yeah, and let me tell you, it was everything I wanted. Actually, it wasn't, about it wasn't the everything WoW. I wanted. I was excited for actually kind of a lot of things that, that were uh, coming out. I wasn't sure what they were going to announce fully, other than like the few things that I expected, right? Like we knew that there was going to be an expansion because of leaks. We knew that there was, for WoW, we knew that there was going to be a Diablo 4 announcement because of leaks. Uh, we knew that there was going to be Overwatch 2 because of leaks. But I wasn't sure if there was going to be anything else. Uh, I guess analy analytics analysts, um, like stock analysts, are kind of disappointed. They're they're like, oh, there should have been more. Well, it's not even. I I, really? I read it was it should have been more, and also 
this is kind of like a Elder Scrolls situation where we did get gameplay for everything, but there's no target date. Yeah. When stuff are coming out. Well, I guess when um, one of the lead developers on uh, Diablo 4 was pressed, he's like, oh, yeah, the game's like years off. Yeah. So which is like, yeah, he said it's it's a ways away. It's not even coming blizzard soon is what he said, too. Yeah. And let me ask you, too, um, about World of Warcraft. Before we get to our overall impressions, like World of Warcraft Shadowlands, I heard that beta for that isn't even going to start to like. Like January this of next year. Uh, I don't or like, I don't know. I didn't know or, if they announced heard, the beta date. I didn't hear it. Yeah, I heard January or December 2020. So like, that doesn't make sense. If, I, you would think that this is going to come out next August, right? Yeah, they, I mean, they haven't, they didn't release a date on it. They didn't yeah. release it. The only thing that they, I think that they released the date on was a Hearthstone expansion. So my overall impression, like yours is obviously very positive. Mine was Blizzard's really good at presenting things, but it, mm -hmm. I'm highly, highly skeptical of everything. Um, and I'll say like for, for a while, I want to see what they're doing to the classes before I get excited. And for Overwatch, I want to know what the hell that's going to be priced at. Cause that seems to me like it's a DLC. Yeah. Expansion. Yeah. How it's described definitely feels like it's a, definitely feels like it's a DLC to be fair. What was the original Overwatch? Like 40 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, would you so pay another what, 40 bucks for like three PVE or four or five PVE maps? To me, it really depends on how much story content is really there. And well, I've always thought what was missing from Overwatch is like a is like a rich like story experience. I don't know having replayable like man versus machine or left for dead thing is going to give you a ton of story. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, Those are, you're cause... talking about two separate things because there's there's the challenges things that are the replayable events, and then there's also story missions. So those are two completely separate features of Overwatch Two. But multiplayer story missions, right? Uh, co-op story yeah. missions, yeah. Co-op yeah. story missions. So you're not gonna I, like Destiny. I right? don't think yeah. you're gonna get locked in a a long cutscene when you're playing with another individual. Well, of course not. But like, there's a lot of like I always just thought with Overwatch, I'm like, there's so much lore in the background of that game that like, like this seems like it could be so cool and we're like missing so much. I'm like, I want more, you know? I think they so. should have doubled down and made it into more of an MMO like it was supposed to be. Make it a looter shooter with keeping the same PVP like they're doing, but like double down at it. Like make a couple open world maps. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe that's, like Maybe I think right plan. now, right now they don't want to lose um, the PvP action of it, right? Because they're really pushing hard on the esports, like really hard. Which is one of the reasons I think that they made a big push on uh, keeping PvP aspect between both Overwatch and Overwatch Two combined, because then it doesn't alienate half your audience. Um, that I think is pretty smart. Yeah, and it makes sense, right? It, it's built in the same engine. It's it's all doable. Um, I think it's unclear whether or not over the first Overwatch is going to get an engine update, but uh, I'm pretty sure it will. Uh, it also doesn't make sense if they're going to be re releasing new skins for champions and those champ those skins are available on both platforms. It's not like they're going to have their dev teams like do one in the new engine and do one in the old engine. Like that, you're doubling yeah. the work for one skin. That doesn't make any sense. So well, yeah. I think with console players, they'll slowly force out people over to Overwatch 2 with just the fact that new consoles are coming out. They're not going to re-release Overwatch on PS5 and Xbox yeah. Scarlet. So it's going to be... Which, and who knows, like if, they're, if, if it comes out the same price, I can see it coming out still at $40, right? Because if you're a brand new to Overwatch person and you're like, oh, I really, I, that, that PvP looks fun, you could spend forty dollars on the old version, or you could spend forty dollars on the new version, and that why wouldn't you buy the new one? You know, and then for yeah. the people that are that already own it, it's just a question of is forty dollars worth the extra content? 
the extra story content and the replayable missions. It's so funny though, too. Like you think about the the monetization model. It's like I'm a avid Overwatch one player, and let's say I've never spent a dime on Overwatch one bloat boxes. Let's say I am. Let's say I've spent five hundred bucks in a year. Should I just get the upgrade? I'm still gonna give you money. Like yeah. why do I pay? Why why pay for it? But that's what I don't understand. Like I feel like you would get more money <laughs> by making that game free. Yeah, I I don't know. Or giving giving a discount to the current Overwatch. That would be smart for especially for PC players. Want to update can't really Overwatch do that. too? You can't really do that in console unless it's a digital only release. Yeah, and since yeah, they do that's have, true. and since they do have hard copies. Well, so but here's the thing, right? Because they're doing it, they they could technically have done it in the same Overwatch instead of releasing it as Overwatch Two, because it's all game modes and engine updates and everything they could have just done it as an update yeah you know and so so made loads of money yeah yeah i wonder why they didn't do that if it's really just the same engine and they're gonna keep like why wouldn't they just say because they still want it as a a game release and i'm sure activision daddy activision says we want you to release a game for this yeah well but like why wouldn't they make it as like a paid dlc release is my point growth Mm. It's probably like, harder to convert. Is it, is it really because like Activision was like, you need to release a new game? They're like, huh, we were going to do this DLC. What if we just made this DLC a new game? Well, maybe. I mean, they release Call of Duty every year, so yeah, maybe that's going to be Blizzard's Call of Duty. Every other year, you get Overwatch 3, which is the same thing. But well, I mean, it's been, what, four? Overwatch, years? Modern Warfare. Four years yeah. since Overwatch was in beta. So, Overwatch 3... Well, Wix, we've expanded on the story map, so we've added Battle Royale. Overwatch and, Auto Chess. Yeah. And everybody jumps out of that plane. They were in that cinematic. It's like a bunch of them. Yep. It's like squads of three, like in the Apex. Yeah. So, Blizzard did also announce their version of Auto Chess, uh, but it's coming in the version of their Hearthstone called battle something i don't know uh and it's a card game though instead which is kind of battle battle hearth cards yeah battle battle hearth battle stone i don't know i i I think they're a little too late on that one I, i think they've been playing catch up too long well i would agree with you but it's it's also a different game because it's same core concept right yeah but you're doing it with but you're doing it with Hearthstone cards. Like you're doing it as a card game and not. Mm -hmm. So it's Mm -hmm. almost, I mean, I haven't really looked into the gameplay of it because I don't play Hearthstone, but it's almost like it would be kind of like a draft. I'm picturing. Hearthstone auto chess. Yeah. Hearthstone battlegrounds. Yeah. That's the one. Battlestone. Battlestone. So I don't know. And then they announced, uh, a new champion for Heart of the Storm. I don't even know who plays that anymore. Does any like they torpedoed the shit out of that game? Yeah, I thought they weren't going to be yeah. leveling it anymore, and then they're still coming out with a couple champions here and there. And they came out with like a, I think a new commander for StarCraft. Yep. Which was like that was a surprising one for me. Like, huh? They probably just it's like I don't know. We have this one half done. Let's like let's just finish it. Let's just finish yeah. it. But let me tell you, so like it was their first release. The most exciting one of all of the the releases was Diablo 4. And let me tell you, man, like I'm just like, oh, is this Diablo 4? Oh, cool. It's a cinematic. I'm just like, whoa. Like I was pretty wowed by that cinematic. Not gonna lie. That doesn't sell me on the game, though. Yeah. If we know anything, Blizzard is like. A, They're really a good at cinematic. Triple A cinematic producer yeah yeah and it had me had me just be like whoa okay now i'm interested and then i guess they had they did a lot of gameplay which i saw which i saw later um and it just i don't know it looked like a diablo game to me i mean that's what it is so the cinematic no but like there was were we talking about it on stream i don't remember we where there was like rumors that it was going to be like a first person Yes, so we thought that was one. Like that was that. one of the leaks. Yep. Yeah, which I, is like, 
I mean, they did beta test a bunch of prototypes for it, though. They're like they did admit okay. last year there was a Dark Souls type Diablo that was that was published by Kotaku. So it could have been a tech demo for all you know, if that well, if that leak was real or not. Someone broke their NDA yeah. on some like weird prototype that they were trying out. And the game ain't coming anytime soon, so it's still got a lot, a lot of dev time. <laughs> it's really weird, though, right? So because they came out, they had their trailer, which looked amazing. Uh, and they're they said that, you know, they're trying to bring it back to like the original dark roots, which I'm all for. Right. Diablo and Diablo 2 were very dark, gritty games. And that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with them as a kid. Um. Need to bring him back to the whole composer. Yeah, I I'm okay with like the gameplay style because I I enjoy it. It's fun. Um, it seems like they're make they're bringing back a lot of different choices that you can do better, like uh, class customization and stuff like that. So that's cool. But what was interesting or what I found like kind of weird is that they were saying it was being developed for PC, Xbox One, and PS4. And then they said it's not going to be out for years. So yeah, we're going to get a PS5 announcement. Like yeah, like it's already been announced. It's coming. Yeah. So it's like, been revealed. It when they said that, I know a lot of people online were like, "Oh man, it'll probably be released next year." Because yeah, it doesn't make sense that you would release it for Xbox One in 2021 when Scarlet's out. But yeah, or maybe I don't know. Maybe they just threw that in there, like I. It's weird that they would say Xbox One and PS4. Like, why not just say Xbox and PlayStation? I mean, based on the tech, you're right. But based on the tech, I, they could multiplat it. Like, they could release it to all four consoles. Yeah. Probably Switch, too. That could be it. Oh, they had I the wonder, Switch logo. So they didn't say Switch in their demos, but I remember seeing yeah. the Switch logo somewhere. It could also be, I wonder if they're just, if it's just literally just placeholder. Probably. They're just like, uh, it's coming to consoles. Because like, it's likely that next holiday, those consoles are going to be on sales, on the shelves, easily. Oh, yeah. Oh, they are. They will nice. be. Nice. They've yeah. already slated for release next holiday. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't doubt if like, because right, like Nintendo probably is just waiting to hit the button on the beefier Switch. Yeah. We already got the ones with the better, yeah, better battery life. Yeah. So. Um, drop the switch pros or something i i personally am immune to blizzard glip glitz and glass like or glitz and glats what do you want to call it Glit- i need to glitz see more glamour glitz and blitz yeah i need to see more i just do i saw enough did you did you watch the gameplay it was three it was it? three minutes of gameplay anymore yeah yeah i mean it what the the gameplay is going to show you it playing like a diablo game i need yeah, to see i need to see systems mostly like in depth if that's cool and which they like, did a little bit yeah i need more like i just don't trust it especially like after diablo 3's uh, uh, what's well, gonna be online only again so hopefully we don't get error or whatever the fuck it was for diablo 3 happening again remember that yeah that was that was annoying as shit that was, well that happens with all freaking game releases yeah so um I want to see it. I'm really skeptical about what they're going to do to monetize the game. That's going to be a make or break situation. Yeah. So really skeptical. Yeah, we'll have to see. It'll be it's going to be baked into every Blizzard game coming forward. And that's why they've abandoned StarCraft stuff like that, because they can't properly monetize it. So. I wouldn't doubt if Warcraft 3 Reforged comes with a bunch of fucking payable skins. For your armies, Ugh. I mean, they kind of tested that out with StarCraft, right? They they released yeah. that uh, that little cute skin pack that you could get for StarCraft. Yep. But, oh, they have like StarCraft has a like a really like a huge store, right? You but can like, buy like a bunch of stuff, like announcer packs and skins and all that. Yeah. But they, it just must not be that profitable because yeah. like, they're obviously not very excited about it. Yeah. Like Activision, EA lately do not release a game without some sort of extra way for them to make money so it's just how it's just it's just how annoying is it that makes sense yep so that stuff it just generally doesn't bother me as long as it's not affecting gameplay yeah i'm I'm the same way it's like well so here's a little tactic that is annoying to me um is these new games come out and during the review period for like the first three weeks there's no store 
And then after three weeks, here comes the store. So it gets out oh, of the yeah. review system. That's fucking shady. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of bullshit. That happened to Mortal Kombat. And so, like, even if it's, like, a cosmetic thing, like, the Mortal Kombat uh, situation was, like, the, the cosmetics were basically so time-consuming to get in-game that they you're basically going to have to buy them. So, so. On, on the one hand, that's, like, I see it as being, you know, kind of shady because you don't want to... They're they're actively trying to avoid having the store be in the review in the reviews, right? Yeah. But at the same time, if if you have like these cosmetic shops, right, for Mortal Kombat, and it's like, oh yeah, you can earn these cosmetics in game, but it's going to be challenging. It's going to take you a while, or you can buy them in the shop, right? How many reviews would come out and review that and not the game? And then you have, yeah, right. And then, so you have a shit ton of reviews coming out that aren't saying anything about the quality of your game. They're just trashing the cosmetics of it. And then it's well, not so really a review of the game. That's their own fault, though. We'll use that title specifically because in previous Mortal Kombat games, the cosmetics are only gotten in game and they weren't a grind. Yeah. So that's their own goddamn fault. I was like comparing it to previous games. Correct. Doesn't really match up. And that's a valid consumer. If I, we're buying that game. I fucking kind of want to know that. I mean, that's kind of, I don't know, like, I don't know. Cause that's like, like that's like saying like, Oh, I'm going to go buy the new version of my car and it better have the same technology and the same quirks and the same exact things as my old car does. Yeah. But I have, as a consumer, I have the option of hunting for cars that have those features. Yeah. Well, and I'm, so it's. Because when I buy the car, it's not going to, it's not, the features are going to come three weeks later. Right. So, but my point, my point is they're, they're having to hide the store. If they came out with the store right away and, and told everybody about the store, then you would know right away. The problem is by doing that, you're now, the, the narrative of every single review is focused on the store, not the gameplay. So the publishers are having to hide the store so that the reviews can focus on the gameplay, which is what the important part is and not the store. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it's, it's a, it's a cyclical problem because you're either, you're either fucking up your reviews or you're making the being reviews. Shady. Yeah. You're making the reviews about what they should be about, but you're being shady because you're trying to hide stuff so that the reviews aren't about the review, the, the other things really, i kind of re- just really get what you're saying mitch because it's like it's kind of it's kind of like people are too are are too quick like it does seem like people are hyper focused on like what you well, have some kind of monetization in your game mm-hmm. and you get really and your upset 60 dollar game yeah absolutely i think yeah. that's okay if you're a league of legends you get a pass guess what I pay zero. Yeah, and I'm okay. And yes, I agree. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not advocating for the fact that a sixty dollar game should have like all these crazy monetization things in it. Like, that's a separate issue all by itself. I'm, I'm just saying that it, it sucks that we're put into this position where publishers don't want to go through and and publish it because, like, how many reviewers go through and actually play the entire game? You know what I mean? Like, all these reviewers want to get articles out day one within the first hour of the game being released so that way you know they can get all the clicks and everything like that because they they're trying to get clicks and money on their website yeah it's this yeah. it's, it's a problem but it, well, it's a, it's a still a valid it's still valid to point out when they're doing some like the Mortal Kombat situation was really stupid yeah i mean like, i think it's valid to point out when they're doing it but if you if you think about it so like league of legends is like it is like a really good example. So it's a free to play and it's super a free-to-play profitable game. and it, mm-hmm. it's profitable because they hate, they get a bunch of people to buy their stuff, but the base game is essentially, it's like one gameplay style, one map. Well, yeah, right? there's, there's more than one gameplay style now. Yeah. Right. But when it first it's came built out up over time, yeah. but it, it came out like when the game was released, it was, it was like a set of characters, one map. Whereas if you're, if you're buying a game that's like one of these AAA titles, you're getting theoretically, it, you're getting like a bunch of like a story, a PvP experience, maybe some PvE experience. So it's like a bunch of stuff. Like in my mind, that's what you're paying the sixty dollars for. Like the cosmetics, just like on League of Legends, are that extra thing for flavor in the game. 
And just like in League of Legends, you can play zero dollars because the base game is worth zero dollars. Or in your sixty dollar game, you can pay as long as it doesn't affect gameplay. It's you can still pay zero dollars because it's because you didn't want to. It wasn't more, worth more than that to you. So I don't know. Like I think that I see the argument for why people would be frustrated about that. It's super frustrating. I'm not sure about going like I'm. I'm curious. Over it. Oh, I'm curious. Because you guys are both dads. How oh, frustrating the, that'll be with you in the future. Oh, I mean... Because you guys have I impulse just control. Won't, I just won't have... <laughs> credit card won't be available for that kind of crap. Like, Yeah, but so you've heard that, about the, uh, the, for, the pressure that kids give each other for Fortnite skins in schools? That's a real deal. I bet they do. Yeah. Be like, you know, you know what? You aren't going to be able to have that. Play a real game. That's just... And that's just, yeah, play a real game, little bitch. <laughs> Audience, just let you know, I have a secret case study to see if he holds his guns. I mean, when, I can see if that's something that's really important to, really important to kid, buying it for, buying it for like their, you know, like special events, things like that as rewards, but like certainly not. Here's my credit card, do whatever the fuck you want. Like, but Johnny, it's just the same as like, it's honestly the same thing as when like when I was in when I was a young kid, it was like, well, that kid had that cool lightsaber toy. I want it. My parents would be like, we don't have money. I'm like, Damn. you know, what's really cool about the lightsaber toy. Huh. What's cool about it. It's a real lightsaber. And it'll it's real. Your, it's, I know. Cut your shit off. Well, you, 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 you can take it home and guess what? It doesn't ask you to keep buying things. Yes, it does. <laughs> fuck are you the, talking I, about I, I, every single time buy, i got the nerf gun that's so cool really? now i need so nerf like, darts and i need a nerf chest here's the thing so the, the, the lightsaber nerf turns nerf, on and i need a nerf turns helmet on and it says hey if you want me to turn on put in 50 cents okay if you want me to extend put in another 50 cents like that's you just get the toy <laughs> i mean the disney lightsabers are like that i'm sure <laughs> like i don't i don't I don't. I just don't like having that shit in the game when I pay six dollars. I'm gonna say props to fucking Borderlands, by the way. As much as that game, I didn't. I had problems with. They have a ton of customizations in that game for free, and they haven't had one paid DLC yet. Yeah, so well, I mean, that's the, that's yeah. the model you should support. They need they need people yeah. to play their games so that they can have paid DLC. I mean, I don't support the other model because even if I am playing one of those games that have the DLC, I just never buy the DLC. Or that like that bullcrap like cosmetic DLC because like what's the, like well my dumb. point is that used to be built in the video game yeah and it's then they figured out people will pay for it that's horseshit just the same as they used to like didn't they used to like they used to give you like bread service for free at places now some restaurants are starting to charge for that you know what's funny figure there's people game. pay for it. There's this game called, uh, I think it's called Grand Blue Fantasy. And it is a gotcha game in Japan. And it sparked almost a shit ton of uh, legislation because a kid streamed himself spending $17,000 to, to get one character character, and never got him. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I can't, like... I don't know, man, because I because I definitely understand that mentality. Like, if I allow myself to do it, I definitely have like a gambling bug. I know you do. We're all we'll just be like, <laughs> be like, oh my god! But I've already invested this much. I that you know what's funny? Time, just you one just, more time. What you just said. There were psychological papers that said that exact same language that you just said. Yep. People feel invested in their purchase, so they keep doing it. Yep. Exactly. And which, so that, I mean, it's literally the same thing that gambling does. Like, yeah. oh, my God, I've lost a hundred dollars. Well, I have yeah. to get a hundred dollars back. Let me get another hundred dollars. I think I lost. I had it's lost kind of, like four hundred dollars once and I pulled out another four hundred dollars and, and lost it in Vegas. Yeah. Like it's it's like it's that stuff bad. like that, that I've actually changed my opinion because I wasn't always so hard line on it. I've changed my opinion on this over time. I'm not milk toast on these things anymore because there are a lot of cases like that. It's kind of disturbing, kind of shitty. I mean, so are the companies exploiting that? Yes, they hire, they, they hire psychologists to exploit that. They're absolutely exploiting that. Like, 
I had to say, like, I think, I don't know. There's a, there's certainly an argument to be made when you're talking about how it affects kids, but also like, why the fuck does a kid have access to make all those purchases? Well, well because the parents don't know. Or, or because they, you know, they'll go on your, the parent's phone, like well, they might not have a phone. And so they like, oh, I want to download this free game. And then, okay. Yeah. Oh, can I play, yeah. can I play the new Call of Duty on your phone, dad? Sure. Here you go. And then the parents don't understand what's going on on the phone. Oh my God. And like, and then you on your phone, you just have your payment method set up because yeah, it's your phone. You do. So yeah, we also need to step out so, too. Like we 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 are around technology all the time. Yeah, we're we're kind of a minority a little bit in that. Yeah. Aspect. Well, so the TMJ PSA for the week is: if you're a parent, go and set up a pin protection on anything that can do purchases on anything that you have. Don't support shitty games. And don't support shitty games. Don't yeah. don't play Call of Duty on your phone. That's fucking stupid. But yeah, back to it's the actually, Diablo it's thing. It's actually though. not that bad. I I played a little bit. It's, Are you talking about okay. the RTS Call of Duty? One? No, they're, no, no, they, they, they have just a released shooter Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty Mobile. It's like the most downloaded game ever. Yeah, apparently in North, oh, but God. it's not. It's not out in China yet either. Wait, so it's like, what's it like? Uh, it's stupid. I played it while I'm on the pooper because you just run around killing people. It's like is the control scheme pretty good? Mm, they try they try to automate it a lot so you all you have to do is press the fire button and you're like you shoot i don't know hold on are you downloading it right now no (laughs) call of duty mobile it's like those this is my get off my lawn moment it's like those people who play those games that play themselves yeah on mobile you've seen those does this have auto aim are you saying this game can do auto aim yeah it has auto aim Oh fuck yeah! Okay, auto aim is kind of shitty though. I turned it off. I just I did manual aim because I'm not a bitch. Oh, well, and I've only played shit on. I've only played one round so far, but okay. But yeah, is That's it like my... is it like a PUBG? Is it like a PUBG clone? No, it's it's a it's like a normal Call of Duty match. So like five v five or three v three or whatever, and you oh. you like respawn until someone hits a kill cap or whatever. Okay. So yeah, back well, to my original I guess I'll have point. to check that out later. Yeah. yeah how many That's skins what... do you have to buy? All the skins. Is there any gameplay affecting? I'm pretty sure you can DLC? buy. I'm pretty sure you can buy guns. I haven't looked into it that much. You can buy, but I'm can. pretty sure you can. God damn it! So absolutely. All so, right. Well, back to your point, Jason. My point was is that's why I want to see how Blizzard monetizes these new games because because it's important to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll be interested so to see like, how what? they monetize Diablo Four as well because they tried to like Diablo Three isn't monetized. They tried to monetize it with the real life auction house, and they made boatloads, and they made a fuck ton of money, and that was like that turned into and, pay to win so fast it was ridiculous. Yeah. But a lot of people made money in that one too. Yeah, like I thought it was when it first came out. I thought it was the coolest thing. I'm like, oh my god, I can I can play this game. I can you know, go in and, and grind this loot and then throw it up on the auction house. And then people are going to, are going to pay me for it. And then I realized that I don't play the game that much. Uh, (laughs) And so like, I wasn't actually getting anything to put on the auction house. So they shut that down. And then like, I think Diablo three right now is in a, is in a pretty good spot, but yeah, it'll be, I mean, who knows? They'll probably do, I don't know if they'll, they'll do skins though, right? Because like your character's affected with your character's appearance is affected by the armor that they look. It's not like you're looking at your character that close on the screen. I don't know. Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll be like, oh, it doesn't affect player power. Well, no, that's what I mean. Like you, no. you'll you that you could get like skins, but then what your character is just always going to look like whatever. How skin does you buy. Uh, what if they had you buy different character types? They could do different character types, and you know what? And if they if they were to release different character types as as DLC, like uh, commanders for um, StarCraft, I think I would be okay with that. Because I don't know, yeah, I don't know if that would be enough for Activision's recurrent revenue. What they want, though, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess it depends on what the, the how list. the necro 
because they just released the Necro as a DLC character. And I want to say that it sold pretty well, but I don't know. I don't know the numbers for sure. I'd be curious too, like based on how much of the audience had lost to like Path of Exile. Yeah. So knowing that, they could monetize it by developing additional characters. Also, apparently Call of Duty Mobile does have pay to win uh, gun variants. Ooh. So. So how many dollars do I have to pay to hundreds. be the best player in that game? I think it's a random system, so. So, so can I beat the $7,000 that kid did? 17000 17000 17, Yeah. Jesus fuck. Yep. <laughs> And so that company, they are, the, like the legislation was about to come hard on the whole country and that company scaled back the whole thing and, and like increased drop rates. Mm. They're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I think like it's going to have some kind of monetization. Oh, it will it. have monetization. So, yeah, I don't know. Like DLC for additional, like it seems like Diablo DLC for additional story to the game seems like a pretty easy one to say will happen. I think additional, like additional characters, maybe like cosmetics seem seem like that. I don't, I don't know. Maybe just hats. We'll give them different hats. Ooh, you know what? what they, okay, hold on. What, what if they charge you for bank space? Well, like Path of Exile. Or so, like little minions and pets that go yeah. with you. So I can see those two things. I can also see, um, I think they're, they have the seasonal play that seems to be doing pretty popular. With, oh yeah, people don't really hate on that very yeah. much. And a lot of games have been going to the, that seasonal battle pass, battle pass method too, right? So like what if every season that they come out with is a battle pass and it's like, Oh, you can earn these extra materials, you know, for crafting or like extra Decker pets Kane. or yeah. Yeah. You pay money and Decker Kane comes out and starts shitting out a bunch of mats. Yep. So and I, can, out. I can absolutely see a while. bank uh, stash <laughs> size stash size. I would, that'd be something I'd pay for just like Damn. path of exile. I don't know if I would pay for it, but but the difference between Diablo for. 4 and Path of Exile is Path of Exile 3. Yeah. So, like, I, I don't know. I guess it just depends. We're going to have to wait. We could speculate all day long, right? And, but Okay, let's do that. Okay. What else? Okay. This is, this, is, <laughs> this is, folks, this is why the stock people are like, hmm, maybe I should wait and see. Because there's just not enough information. Yeah, it's know. just, yeah. Like, especially, the thing that would make me really sad would be if... Like even just a little bit of gameplay, because it seem it really does seem to me like what they did was they, like it, I would not be surprised if the cinematic we saw and the three minutes of gameplay that we saw is literally the only thing that's done with that game right now. Did you know that's what happened with Anthem? I bet the the Anthem trailer. Nobody in the studio had been working on that game and had no clue what that was <laughs> when it came out. Yeah, it wouldn't. It would not surprise me if literally that what they showed was the only thing that's done on the game right now. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting. I'm I'm really excited for when they release uh, Diablo for the first person shooter. Yep. <laughs> I would still play a spinoff Diablo Dark Souls game. Like, if you want to sell me that for $60 without the bullshit, I'd play that. I mean, if you just give me $60, I'll sell that to you. No, no. It's coming I, soon. I, like, if they the need new, if, if Blizzard needs new IP, do the Diablo Dark Souls fucking spinoff. Do it. Could be good. Bring back the ghosts. Fucking, you're not doing anything StarCraft. Why? Well, like, they keep canceling StarCraft shooters. It's like the best brand for shooters. Yep. It really is like the the StarCraft shooter sounded so cool. Yeah, like you could have a arena type shooter that's not like an Overwatch with three different races that have different roles, like Alien versus Predator back in the day. Did you ever play that? Yes, no. that was a pretty fun yeah. game. Fuck yeah! But instead, the Predator, the Zerg, yeah, or the Protoss. I don't know, man. I'm a spitballing. 
I'd play yeah. the fuck out of that shit. It'd be awesome. I don't know. It makes me wonder how many of these things are like that we're talking about are actually in development. Like, what if there is the first person well, shooter that's in development? They there just, was. Well, no, I'm talking they about for Diablo. It. Or, oh yeah. You know, like there could be, there could also still be a first person shooter Diablo or Starcraft game in development. They they might have had like a couple different ones, and they scrapped one of them. Like we have no Except idea two. what they're working. Or no. yeah, you know, like there's so much crap that they work on. Throw away I, and then yeah, I'd imagine all devs are balls of the wall on these on these games though. Yeah, I, I doubt they I doubt they can there's they can spread themselves too thin trying to get new stuff. Yeah, no, I I think that it'll be these these three titles for the next year or so, and then once we get more in the release date time, right? Because like I guess that's the thing, Blizzard hasn't really released that much content in the past five years. So yeah. get these three titles out and then that'll give you some leeway to, to work on some of the other stuff. Which cool by me. Yeah. That's all I got. All right. <laughs> so what do you guys think? I think if you're on YouTube, you should like comment and subscribe hell yeah. uh, apparently you have to say smash the like obliterate the like button or the dislike button it doesn't matter it's all engagement that's all the ro- the google bot yep. cares about you could leave me a nasty comment and i'd approve it yeah leave a nasty comment we like those that's first engagement. comment gets pinned google's ro- algorithm says oh people are engaging oh do 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 People must yep. hate this video. Let me get it to more people so we can see how many people hate it. Let's yeah. see how many people hate this. Yeah. yeah. And yep. those of you audio only, leave us an iTunes review and like and follow us on Google Play and Spotify. Or if you're just listening off the website, just like smile really Bookmark profoundly. our site. Bookmark the site. Bookmark it. Smash the bookmark button. Smash that bookmark. <laughs> and also just smile profoundly that yeah. you got to the end. And know that you are special. And please check out the uh, new TMJ cosmetic shop that's not real. Yeah. Where we, where we sell Jason masks. <laughs> and, and reskins. <laughs> <laughs> Tim reskins. And, uh, and Fallout repair packs. Yep. Nice. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.